Huh? You have, you've had a lot of fun today. Man, I got briars and stuff to get out of you. Hello and welcome to Guns and Gear. And me and Major has enjoyed a wonderful day uh, here in the Great Dismal Swamp in the eastern part of Virginia. And we're very close to the border of uh, North Carolina to give you an idea of where we're at. But uh, at any rate, the Dismal Swamp is... Uh, Oh man, it's a it's a great place uh, to uh, enjoy some time in the woods if you don't mind thick woods because uh, it certainly is thick and poor Major has had his uh, challenges with the briars and brambles but he's made through it. He's uh, he's quite the experienced uh, swamp dog. <laughs> By nature, he's a good mountain dog, but uh, he's learned to be a a pretty fair swamp dog. And I wanted to make a video and talk about the uh, firearm that I've carried with me today for defense and talk about that subject just a little bit because uh, I have been challenged on why I would need a firearm and uh, in the woods so to speak and you know uh, there's uh, very many reasons why uh, I think that it's prudent to carry a firearm you know you already all the great reasons to carry a firearm in your daily life uh, apply here and uh, sometimes because you were often alone, uh, often away from uh, towns and things of that nature, uh, people may be a little bit more bold in uh, trying to uh, take advantage of a situation. Having a firearm for that is, is a good thing. And I'll also look at it as uh, for woods protection because, uh, hey, you can run into some animals that are uh, bent on hurting you for one reason or another. Now, uh, again, I've had people kind of challenge that, but here, let's just look at where I'm at right here. I'm in uh, eastern Virginia. I'm in the Great Dismal Swamp. Uh, some years back, maybe 10 years ago or so, I don't exactly remember when, there was a huge uh, black bear killed here during hunting season, and I believe it was like 720 pounds, 740 pounds, something of that nature. It was a big one. And we've had... Uh, you know, big bears killed like that in the eastern part of the United States, in the southeastern part of the United States. Uh, next door, uh, I'm less than maybe a mile, maybe two miles from the North Carolina border. On, in eastern North Carolina, there was a huge bear killed some years back. Uh, that was over 800 pounds. Okay. And I hope that some of you guys that are always looking to catch me in something are Googling it because you can include in your comments what the exact weight of these bears were. But at any rate, uh, the whole idea is, uh, yes, there are uh, large critters uh, that you may have to deal with. Now, by nature, black bear do not predate, do not try to hunt and kill to eat uh, uh, human beings. But, you know, on that rare occasion, it does happen. And uh, you don't want to be caught with just a stick in your hand if you had to deal with a 700, 800 pound bear, right? <laughs> now, I know you folks that uh, live in areas that have grizzly bears are going, man, that ain't nothing. But uh, you're right. It, it, uh, our black bears do not compete with uh, grizzly bears in no way, shape, or form. But I ask you, if uh, you have come across that black bear and he has decided that you look, you look like lunch, do you want to have a pointy stick or do you want to have a firearm? And uh, for me, uh, that is uh, another reason why I carry a firearm. Now today, me and Major has enjoyed ourselves and we've been doing some bushcraft stuff and he's been chewing on some sticks and he's been caught up in the briars, but uh, all in all, we've had a great day. Haven't seen the first solitary soul and nothing but uh, small animals running around hadn't seen I haven't even really seen any sign of bear in this little piece of the woods that I'm in but at any rate the uh, firearm that I've been carrying today is a Glock and it's not a 10 millimeter okay this is the uh, Glock 31 it is their full size shall we say uh, uh, 357 sig now I know you may be thinking that a 357 sig uh, would that be a good woods uh, cartridge and I am uh, it been exploring that. I like the 357 SIG, especially when it first came out, because it was specifically designed to mimic 
a 125 grain 357 Magnum being shot out of a four inch revolver. Uh, those ballistics uh, and the uh, just the huge amount of data uh, wrapped around that cartridge and its use with law enforcement and civilians alike has proven to be an outstanding, an absolutely outstanding defensive round. And SIG was looking to take that type of performance and fit it into that 9mm 40 Smith & Wesson size gun. And they did so, and the 357 SIG is one of those cartridges by, that I've often wondered why it isn't even more popular than it is. It, it isn't as popular, I think, as it should be. Well, most of the ammunition for the 357 SIG is that 125 grain uh, types of ammunition, whether it be a full metal jacket for practice ammo or some sort of a um, jacketed hollow point, bonded hollow point, uh, pre-fragmented uh, ammunition, some sort of a self-defense ammunition. Now there's a couple folks that uh, make some interesting ammo for the 357 SIG to see if it can broaden the uh, uh, the use of the gun broaden its abilities and uh, Double Tap has come through with a couple of rounds that uh, I think are very interesting and one of them is what I have loaded in the gun right now and that is a uh, 180 grain hard cast lead round okay and hopefully y'all are getting a pretty good look at that uh, it's hard for me to tell with this camera but at any rate Maybe this will give you a better look. This little small bottleneck cartridge with a 180 grain hard cast lead bullet. Now the whole idea for a woods defense type of round for handguns is about penetration. Uh, the self-defense ammunition often expands and therefore it, uh, it doesn't have the amount of penetration. This 180 grain uh, round has got a lot of weight that it's uh, toting in its load, and the hard cast lead will not deform, deform easily. Uh, this lead, unlike lead that you see uh, in target ammunition and, and, and wad cutters and things of that nature, uh, this is, has a much higher tin content in the mixture to create the lead, and therefore uh, it will not deform uh, quickly or easily just going through um, the material of a, of a human being or a deer or a bear or things of that nature. So therefore, it does give you a great penetration. Now, I don't have that 10% gelatin and things of that nature, and I, I need to get some of that because it would be kind of fun to compare some of these things. I do have some rudimentary type of testing that I've, I've done with uh, ammunition such as this right here, and it usually involves uh, uh, wet newspaper and wet phone books and things of that nature and to see what kind of penetration or maybe just uh, uh, jugs of water uh, to test penetration. And this brown has proven to have a lot of penetration in that way. Uh, I really hope that this year I get the idea, uh, not the idea, I get the opportunity to try this round out on some deer and uh, hopefully it's not just a straight broadside shot but maybe quartering away or quartering towards me so I can uh, see what kind of penetration that this round really has. Alright folks, well that's my video. Uh, I thought I'd uh, talk about the 357 SIG a little bit and you know the Glock 31. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about Glock guns. You know they're, they're not the most accurate but uh, they're, they're good dependable firearms. A lot of people like them and for good reason. Uh, and I like this one very much. The only thing that I've added on there is I have put some uh, uh, night sights on there with tritium inserts. So therefore, uh, uh, this makes a nice little package for the woods. It's uh, got 15 rounds plus one of some uh, pretty deep penetrating rounds. So, all right, folks, that's it. Thank you for watching. And remember to shoot straight on the range and in life. Thanks.